Uh, thanks a lot, Alex. Um, yes, I'd like to uh, welcome Professor Barney Glover, AO, FTSE and FRSN, and Vice Chancellor and President of Western Sydney University, New South Wales. So I have to admit, I had to look up on Google what all these letters were after Barney's name. Uh, AO is the Office of the Order of Australia. FTSE is Fellow of the Australian Academy of Technological Sciences, and FRSN is Fellow of the Royal Society of New South Wales. So Barney is a distinguished academic and a widely admired university administrator who is currently Vice Chancellor and Pre President at Western Sydney University. Barney began his career as a mathematician. I recall at one stage shortly after his graduation from his PhD, his research out output constituted 1% of the mathematical research produced in, in Australia for that year. He was pivotal in bringing Alex Rubinoff to Australia in 1996, and later on also in bringing John Borwein to Australia in 2008. So Barney began his, uh, his executive career uh, at the University of Ballarat. He was appointed Director of Research and Graduation Studies there in the 1990s. In 1997, he moved to Curtin University as Director of Research and Development before becoming appointed uh, a Pro Vice Chancellor of Research and Development. And 2006, uh, Barney Glover became the uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research at the University of New Newcastle. So in 2009, he became Vice Chancellor of uh, Charles Darwin University and began his term as Vice Chancellor of Western Sydney University in January 2014. Uh, so Barney has uh, uh, also in 2015 was elected unopposed the Chair of the Universities of Australia, the peak body representing the Australian university sector nationally and internationally and, and served a term in that role. So uh, uh, without any ado, I'd like to, to ask Barney to um, uh, open up our workshop and uh, once he's finished this task, I, I believe he'll go on to share with us some of his memories and insights into his friends, uh, Alex Rubinoff's career and life. So over to you, Barney. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, it's great to see you all. In fact, it's great to see some very familiar faces around uh, the screen. I want to begin by acknowledging Zari. Zari, lovely to see you on the screen. Lovely to see you. And I notice Elder is on the screen as well. Elder. Good to see you too. You're looking fit and well. Um, and Jaya, good to see you. <laughs> it's Hi, been, It's been a long time, my friend. It's good to see you. And you're looking very fit as well. Thank you. Um, but welcome, everyone. And uh, thank you for those kind words, Andrew. I appreciate the introduction. And thank you to Alex for... Uh, your earlier comments and also for all of the organizers. I must say that Wombat is a great name. I'm, I'm glad that you were able to retrofit uh, the acronym to a great Australian uh, animal like a Wombat. So for the overseas, uh, overseas guests, hopefully you'll appreciate the, uh, how wonderful a Wombat is if you ever come to Australia. You might see one in zoos around the world. Uh, and I'm very pleased to have a chance to speak to you. I'll move on to talking a little bit about uh, Alex in a moment. Um, but I did just want to reflect a little on the, the workshop. I've had a look at the program. It looks an exciting program. And, um, and I'm sure if Alex was with us, uh, as I'm sure he is in spirit, he would be very interested in every single talk, not surprisingly, uh, because of the breadth of his own research interests. But um, I'm sure he would be very, very pleased uh, to see people coming together to celebrate mathematics in all its forms and functional analysis and non-smooth analysis in particular, but more about that shortly. One of the uh, characteristics of my career that Andrew outlined, and I, I have to admit that Alex would be very deeply disappointed in me uh, for having left mathematics uh, and not doing research and moving into administration, something he would have found um, uh, uh, less than a desirable characteristic for a colleague. Um, but I'm very, I'm, I'm sure he'll also be very pleased that, uh, that I've become the president of two Australian universities uh, over the course of the last 12 years. And I'm, I'm now president of a very large Australian university on, uh, in the outer suburbs of, uh, of Sydney. Western Sydney University, very large, 50,000 students and 5,000 staff. 
But on my journey to get here, I have had the uh, privilege of working in institutions with a deep interest in optimization with Luca Cetta and Cochle Teo at, uh, at Curtin, of course, and, uh, and the functional analysis group that worked at uh, Newcastle, John Giles and uh, Braley Sims and others who are working there. So um, I've never been too far from um, some great mathematicians. And I, I did bring John Borwine to Australia and tragically, John was with us for not long enough, little like Alex, he wasn't here long enough. And, uh, but John made a great contribution and as has, of course, Alex. So I'm more than happy to be here. Very, very pleased to have an opportunity to um, officially open the, uh, the workshop to commemorate uh, the 80th birthday of Alex Rubinoff and uh, to uh, welcome you all. Yeah, so with those opening remarks, um, Andrew, I might go on now to say a little bit about Alex and my relationship with him. But please do, Barney, go ahead. So thank you very much for that. Um, it's customary in Australia when we have a major function like this uh, to acknowledge the First Nations people of this country, uh, the Aboriginal and the Torres Strait Islander people of Australia. And uh, I would like to do that to begin to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm located, which are the people of the Darug Nation. And over the weekend, I was on the lands of the Awabakal and the Waramai people. Uh, and Australia has many uh, Aboriginal tribes. Uh, and at major events, we acknowledge the traditional owners, the First Nations people, and we also acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. So I would also like to do that at the beginning of this uh, presentation uh, this morning, this morning, my time, wherever you might be in, in the world. Um, so as I've said, welcome to everyone in Australia and around the world to this workshop commemorating the 80th birthday of a truly great mathematician, Alex Rubinoff. <laughs> I hope um, that Zari enjoys this, Zari, Dr. D Zari Dazlov, um, Alex's wife, who's here with us. And uh, I know Elder is here, as I mentioned, but I hope also Mika can join us at some point, perhaps this evening at the Rubinov lecture. Um, but it is, I know, very important uh, to acknowledge the great contribution of Alex Rubinov, but uh, to do so in the presence of Zari and Elder and Mika is particularly important and worthy of note. So welcome to Zari and Elder and Mika. Now I was asked by Andrew to say a few words at the beginning of the workshop by way of welcome uh, to attendees, but more importantly to reflect on my personal recollections of Alex. Now you might wonder if you don't know a great deal about the journey Alex took to Australia, you might wonder why I might be asked to do this. And that's a good question. Um, how hopefully it will become clear over the next few minutes as I give you a little bit more insight. Without giving too much away at the beginning, I was an academic, a junior academic. Uh, in fact, I began my academic career in many ways at Ballarat, the University of Ballarat, now Federation University, in the very early 1990s. And I had a little to do with attracting Alex and Zari, Elder and Mika to Ballarat, but more of the detail of that in a moment. It would be remiss of me in a talk like this and in an audience like this, not to outline without being able to do justice to it because it's an extraordinary story, briefly to outline Alex's career prior to coming to Australia. This is well summarized in particular in an obituary published at the time of his death by Sid Morris in the Gazette of the Australian Mathematical Society. And I wanna quote from Sid's, uh, Sid's comments about Alex. Alex Rubinov was born in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, Russia in 1940, and did his undergraduate studies at Leningrad State University. This was followed by a PhD in Novosibirsk in Siberia and an advanced doctorate at Moscow University. Subsequently, he held positions in Leningrad and Kalini in Russia, then he joined his mentor, Nobel Prize winning mathematician and economist, Leonid Kantorovich, 
in the Scientific Research Centre near Novosibirsk at the time of the Siberian Academy being established. He enjoyed seven years there until he needed to escape anti-Semitism by moving to Baku in Azerbaijan, where he was head of the Mathematics Institute there. With the fall of the Soviet Union, he moved to Ben Gurion, University of the Negev in Besheva in Israel. I want to stop there for a moment, though, that's part way through the, the opening comments from Sid, to make an aside that on many occasions, I had the great uh, pleasure of discussing with Alex his experiences as a mathematician in the former Soviet Union. The, as um, Kutatladze points out in his tribute to Alex, the poisonous careerist nature of the environment in the Soviet Union uh, at that time uh, was exemplified by the very unfair treatment that Alex received, his need to submit th on three occasions unfairly for his higher doctorate. And Alex on many occasions in conversation with me would outline just some of the corruption that uh, permeated aspects of mathematics in the Soviet Union during that very, very difficult period. To go back to, uh, to Sid Morris for a moment, over his career, Alex published 17 monographs and textbooks, 12 edited books and journal special issues and more than 200 research papers. His most cited work is the book Abstract Convexity and Global Optimization, published in 2000 by Kluver Academic Publishers. I might add, and I think it is noteworthy, that the most productive period of Alex's very distinguished career actually occurred in the last 10 years of his life, which is why he was taken from us so prematurely. Uh, in that 10 year period, he published on average a paper every four to five weeks, continuously for 10 years. The best part of 120 publications in that period. That's an extraordinary productivity, particularly when you consider the quality of those papers the quality of the contribution, the depth of the contribution, and in particular, the breadth of the collaboration. Now his first published paper, for those who are interested, was with his PhD supervisor, GP Akalov. It was entitled, The Method of Successive Approximation for Finding the Polynomial of Best Approximation. It was published in Soviet Math Dokladi in 1964. And those of us who can remember studying before the internet and all things electronic, will remember how we used to go through Doc Lardy hunting for Russian, the English translation of Russian mathematics to see what was happening in the former Soviet Union in that period. So that was Alex's first paper in 1964. And as I said, close to 120 papers in his last 10 years. Now this is not going to be a technical talk from me. Um, I couldn't do justice to that on any particular aspect. That's a very good photo that just came up, by the way, because it is very much the basis of abstract convexity. I saw that earlier. It was nice to see that. I'm sure Alex was explaining it in depth to someone starting with that very particular expression of the piece of the pointwise supremum of a, of a class of um, minority functions. So this isn't a technical talk fo focusing on any particular aspect of Alex's extraordinary contributions to mathematics extending back as they do over well over 50 years. It is in fact a deeply personal reflection on my time with Alex and the circumstances that brought us together almost 30 years ago. I did pu publish, I was very, very fortunate to publish extensively with Alex over many years until, as I said earlier, uh, I moved away from mathematical research and began a career in university management. Although Alex held senior positions as he did in institutions, including in Azerbaijan and of course at Chow, the Center for Informatics and Applied Optimization at, uh, at Fed Federation University, he was always forced, first and foremost, an exceptional theoretician and deep mathematical thinker. He loved mathematics and it was rarely far from his mind or his pen or pencil as the case may be. I'm sure he was 
disappointed that I moved to the dark side of university administration, although I'm sure he would be pleased to have become an Australian university president. It's an interesting question to reflect on the topics that might dominate a workshop devoted to Alex's work. From my perspective, it would move from very fundamental results in functional analysis through mathematical economics and culminate in the grandeur of global optimization. There would be intersecting themes and ideas linking these areas and others together, which would illustrate even more cogently just how sophisticated and diverse Alex was in developing powerful results and exploring their application the sign of a truly great mathematician. Today's workshop, in fact, touches, not surprisingly, as it's a tribute to Alex, on many of the areas, areas that Alex was so passionate about. Duality, abstract convexity, computational methods, non-smooth analysis, and of course, within that frame, quasi-differentiability, to mention just a few. Again, the concept of quasi-differentiability is without doubt one of the most important contributions made to non-smooth analysis in the great work that Alex undertook in the early 1980s and late 1970s with his great friend, Vladimir Demyanov. But perhaps Alex's greatest contribution wasn't simply profound and elegant mathematical proofs and interconnecting applications, but rather his collaborative spirit and his willingness to guide and support so many colleagues, students, postdoctoral fellows, and friends from across the globe. They were never far from his mind. And it is so wonderful to look at these images coming across the screen of Alex with so many of his friends and colleagues from all over the world enjoying each other. There's that shot on abstract convexity again. Um, but musing about mathematics and mathematicians and the breadth and depth of mathematicians and their mathematics. It was through Alex that I met many of the other great names of modern optimization theory and practice from Russia, Israel, Europe, Asia, and the United States. Um, names like Demyanov, Vinyofa, and many others. And I see some of them on the screen today. They gravitated to him and he responded with his customary warmth and charm. And of course, mathematical curiosity. My first interaction with Alex was as a PhD student at Melbourne working with Bruce Craven on non-smooth mathematical programming. And it's wonderful to see Jaya here because Jaya and I did some great work together in those days. Jaya may not remember it, but he was a PhD student at Melbourne just before I became a PhD student at Melbourne. Uh, I think uh, Jaya, you came out on a Colombo plan scholarship all those years ago, and you're a great PhD student. I remember reading your thesis. And uh, it was wonderful eventually to work with you as well uh, for many years. Uh, another great friend of Alex, a great mathematician. So I was interested at the time in a series of papers by Vladimir Demyanov and Alex on notions of quasi-differentiability I mentioned a moment ago in abstract spaces, as you did in that wonderful time before the internet. There are too many people on this, on this, uh, video conference today, you probably don't remember there was a time before the internet. Andrew was probably very young at that time, he might vaguely remember it. Others, of course, will remember it. But in those days, of course, what did you do when you wanted to communicate with someone? You wrote them a letter and you posted it, what's more. Um, I remember Bruce Craven and I wanting to talk to a Vietnamese mathematician we were working with in the 1980s, early 1980s. We sent a telex to Vietnam. I'm not sure what ever happened to that telex, but they were very different times. So I wrote to Vladimir Demyanov in St. Petersburg with a series of questions and no doubt very naive ideas, seeking some guidance and advice from people who had been studying quasi-differentiability in some detail. 
and in fact, it developed the concept. Not surprisingly, I didn't receive a reply for many, many months. Now that wasn't because of a disinterest on the other side of the world. It was just the nature of communication at that time. Uh, what had happened, of course, is that Vladimir had got my letter and, and mused over it and decided that it was much closer to the interests of his great friend, uh, Alex Rubinov, and sent the letter onwards to Baku and Azerbaijan. As my primary interest at the time was around solvability theorems, and of course they arose as a fundamental tool in developing very general first order characterizations of optimality in many classes of non-convex and non-smooth optimization problems. So studying solvability theorems uh, and conditions for solvability seems, seem to be a very useful place for me to explore and to seek some advice. Alex was of course, the ideal source of advice in that context. I didn't realize it at the time beyond quasi-differentiability, but of course, there was a much deeper connection uh, that Alex had to solvability theorems. Now he wrote back to me, and it is a letter I hold dear and I cherish to this day. It was a wonderfully detailed response to my letter sprawling over more than a dozen pages and introducing me to the beauty of abstract convexity and the seminal work that he, they had done more than a decade earlier on Minkowski duality with SS Kutaladze. Kutaladze. It's just true to say that this was the first, and in my view, still the most important work on abstract convexity. And at the time it was framed uh, as not only a significant contribution to functional analysis in its own right, which it was, it was in fact uh, being used at the time as a very significant contribution to Choquet theory. So it was deep in its own right and making a contribution to another area uh, of um, uh, the connection between um, co convex analysis uh, and uh, approximation theory. So that exchange of letters over the best part of a year was, as they say in the classics, from my perspective at least, for those who know something of Casablanca the movie, the start of a beautiful friendship. Now the first paper that uh, Alex and I wrote together, which began to take um, account of that great contribution, that seminal contribution on Minkowski duality into frame it in the context of solvability theorems was with, um, with Alex, of course, and Bruce Craven. And it was uh, entitled Solvability Theorems Involving Inf-Convex Functions. And it was published in the Journal of Math Analysis and Applications in uh, 1995. Now, this, of course, was a very tumultuous period in the world, the late 80s through to the mid 90s. And as we noted in that extract I read from Sid Morris a little earlier, it was a tumultuous period in Alex and Zari's life and the difficulties unfolding in the former Soviet Union, which meant that collaboration was going to be challenging, let alone from my perspective, actually locating Alex as he moved from Azerbaijan to Turkey to Israel. We did intermittently interact during that period, often via fax, as it turned out, and agreed to write our first paper together on solvability theorems, the one I just quoted to you. I recall, in fact, to this day, a frantic request I had from a very frustrated Alex for a draft of, a, of that paper to respond to as he was momentarily in Hazatepe University in Turkey. Now, we exchanged a few faxes later, and of course, he then emerged at Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Besheva in Israel. The paper was finalized and submitted. From here, we continue to collaborate from afar. And here's a little bit of the story that people may not be um, familiar with. I was able to apply for funding, a very strange source of funding, as all mathematicians in the 1990s in Australia were looking for any source of funding to support our efforts. I actually applied for what was called a bilateral science and technology grant from the Australian government, not thinking for a moment that they'd fund a mathematician, but they did. And the bilateral part was between, as it turned out, Australia and Israel. And it was to bring Alex to Ballarat for a six week visit. So serendipitously, the funding arrived 
I think it was about $6,000, something like that at the time. But getting him here to Australia wasn't very easy. And I recall at least on two occasions, sharp exchanges with the Australian embassy in, in Israel, uh, which at the time was reluctant to issue a visa to Alex because they were concerned about his English language skills and not quite what they expected. I pointed out, as did other eminent mathematicians um, around the world, uh, that in fact, uh, it was his world-class mathematics that was important and not his English language skills. And he communicated perfectly well in, in mathematics in English. So fortunately the visa was granted and Alex came to Australia for that first visit. And that was a great visit. Certainly for me, it was a great visit, full of mathematics. And Alex enjoyed the peace, the calm and the quiet of rural Victoria. And he often commented to me on this tranquility he was experiencing in Ballarat. And I'm sure as others have commented in reflecting on Alex's life, that Ballarat presented this enormously quiet um, period of contemplation from the, the challenges of, of Eastern Europe and the Middle East and, and Europe more generally at that time. He often commented on this tranquility on his evening walks, no doubt reflecting on a mathematical problem, but amazed by the calm and the lack of people chatting about anything political at all. On many occasions, he compared this to the frenetic politics that dominated conversations that he was experiencing in Besheva and elsewhere. Everyone in the department of Ballarat was equally impressed and overwhelmed by Alex and very keen to see him return. To again quote Sid Morris, if I could, Alex finally thrived in the peace and, peace and tranquility of Ballarat and Australia in order to escape anti-Semitism and Soviet oppression, but always nurtured his international circle of research colleagues and attracted many to visit Ballarat and some to join its staff. And uh, when you read the tributes to Alex after his death uh, and on the occasion of his commemorating his 70th birthday, you see many commenting on the way in which Ballarat appeared on the world stage by virtue of the great work of Alex and attracting people around him and what he established. And it was only last night that Andrew and I exchanged emails about some of the uh, workshops and enduring um, conferences that Alex both attracted to Australia and set up that continue to this day. But I won't dwell further on that first visit. Alex enjoyed, and Zari, Zari might remember this, but he enjoyed the restaurant at the Red Lion Hotel, not for drinking at all. He was staying there uh, and he used the restaurant to eat at. Elder would remember the Red Lion in Ballarat. It's a nice little hotel. But um, Alex wasn't really that clear about the menu. So he just methodically, like the great mathematician he was, he methodically worked his way through the menu and cycled through it over time. He did return, I think, Zari, slightly larger than when he left. And I think you may have taken exception to that. But he enjoyed, amongst other things, crocodile and kangaroo, which appeared on the menu. But Alex, I think, cycled through them two or three times in the course of that stay. Now, eventually, and I won't dwell on the circumstances, but eventually we attracted Alex to a fellowship at Ballarat and Zari, Elder and Mika joined him. And Zari, I still remember meeting you at the airport, at Tullamarine Airport when you flew in. Um, the last person off that plane, as I recall, because you had so much you were bringing into Australia. Now that particular fellowship was facilitated and I, sh I should pay tribute to uh, the Pro Vice Chancellor at Ballarat at the time, Ray Over, who recognized this unique opportunity, a very unique opportunity for a very young university to develop world-class niche expertise in mathematics. Uh, the VC at the time, the Vice Chancellor at the time at Ballarat was David James, and he was followed by Kerry Cox during the period in which Alex was at the university. They both played very important roles in supporting Alex and ensuring he received the due recognition that he deserved. And which I'm sure contributed to that wonderful um, productivity that emerged in the final 10 years of his life. 
Now, what followed from that first fellowship was a thoroughly fulfilling and deeply enjoyable period for me, I know, and for Alex and Zari and Elder and Mika, culminated eventually, of course, in the formation of Chow, that beautifully named Center for Informatics and Applied Optimization, and a raft of high quality papers, monographs, new computational methods, copious research visits, and of course, prestigious grants from the Australian Research Council and from industry partners. And industry partners featured very much with the work that Alex and Zari were doing, reaching out to recognize that pure mathematics, though beautiful and elegant and important that it was, it was equally important to reach out and find applications in industry to make a difference in the applied nature of the work that Alex and Zari and all of the mathematicians working with them were doing. So that industrial connection became very important to Alex. And I know he enjoyed it uh, greatly, it, provided it didn't take him too far from the beauty and the elegance uh, of mathematics. But that e exemplifies the best aspects of mathematics wherever it's practiced well and at the highest level. And it was practiced well and at the highest level at Ballarat during that halcyon period under Alex's leadership and guidance. Alex left us too young and with much more to do. As I think uh, Kutetladze commented when he commented on Alex's productivity, many mathematicians do their best work when they're young in their twenties and thirties. But Alex was doing great work well into his sixties. So from that perspective, uh, he was at the peak of his contribution in many ways, both through his own research, but through the mentoring and support of so many others around him for so long. He was a great friend. He was a gentle mentor. And he was a truly fine collaborator. And there's much we could learn uh, as, as a group of scholars around the world of the power of collaboration when you reflect on the contribution Alex made in that regard. Now, I'm sure his name and most importantly, his work will be mentioned often and with affection throughout this workshop. I wish everyone a very successful meeting. I wish everyone a very successful commemoration of the contribution that this man who appears on our screen in all of these photos has made. And I feel very humbled to have had an opportunity to tell you a little of the story of Alex's arrival in Australia and the contribution he's made. And that that contribution will be enduring. So thank you. Thank you very much, Barney, for your kind words about Alex, about this history of him coming to Australia and also the preceding history of him in the Soviet Union. Uh, you expressed many things which other people are going to talk about today, probably. In my case, I was very pleased to hear very many familiar names. Vladimir Demyanov, of course, uh, Semyon Kotatiladze, Alex Yofe, Gleb Akilov, uh, Leonid Kantarovich. So it was a, a great piece of history, of course, and uh, it is related to Alex and it, uh, it is uh, continuing somehow in Australia now. Uh, I, I want to add that I was a little bit wrong when I said that uh, Vera was uh, the only person whom we delegated to Sydney. Actually, Barney was the first one probably delegated from uh, Ballarat and from Melbourne to strengthen mathematics there or just the university system. So uh, thank you very much again, Barney, for your kind presentation and uh, your words about Alex. And uh, we continue with this memorial session which started very well.